Okay, this little piece that you heard, it's called E Blues in the key of E and in standard tuning. And we're going to use that piece for a, a lesson on, well, a few techniques. I had a few people asking me, do, me that. So here goes. I tapped the tune out completely and you will find the link to the tab in the video description here below. And I just have to explain also, for the first time I used also some abbreviations for the main focus of this lesson, which is muting or damping, which is stopping the strings from vibrating, killing the sound. And I think that's a very underrated feature of blues playing and it kind of makes or breaks your playing, I think. Well, it helps in any case to color your playing. So the abbreviations I used, because I uh, damp with my both hands, are RF, which means right hand finger. And here's an example. So after I pick the strings, I rest my finger one or two on the strings and killing the sound. Then you also find the letter uh, P of palm, right hand palm. So I use my palm to uh, mute the strings by resting it after I picked it. And without muting it would sound like this. Much more interesting with muting, I think. Then also the left hand uh, helps with muting. And you will see the abbreviation LU, which means left hand up, how original. For example, I have a B7 chord here, which is the 5th string, 2nd, 4th string, 1st, 2nd on the 3rd string, open 2nd string, and the 2nd uh, fret sorry, of the 1st string. And if I lift my hands slightly so the strings don't touch the metal fret anymore, you get this. Also muted. Now, about that open 2nd string, if I would have placed my fingers right uh, on the strings, you hear that second sound still sounds, so we just tilt our hand a little bit, so that third finger is touching the second string, and then you have a mute of all the strings. I also mute with my left hand fingers individually, uh, but not often, and I will explain that in the when we go over the song, and that is of course um, in the tab um, LF, left hand finger. Okay, um, get your tab and we'll start with this piece. I'll go over it uh, phrase by phrase, and here's the first one. Okay, that's easy, and then we have a it's kind of an E7 chord, and we only play the first two strings, so it's a, a partial chord with the index in the middle, and we slightly bend it. And the third one, we bend a bit more. That's one of the techniques I think uh, you should learn to uh, put some more uh, feeling and dynamics in your playing. So you won't find that in the tap, but if you listen carefully, you will hear it. And we mute that with the right hand fingers. And of course, you determine how long the strings, the sound uh, keeps on going. And there's a lot of va variation, of course, possible here. And then we go to a B7 chord. And there, the, the, when we go down, it's an upstroke and a downstroke. And I use my two fingers held together for that. So I have more control and more force also, more uh, forceful sound. And that is uh, left hand up and sometimes a bit of palm also to mute the sound. And after that we have two bass strings and that is muted to the second one by the palm. Okay, once more that phrase. Now we go to an uh, A7 chord to play the, the passage first. 
So we had that bass and then we go also slightly bent and here's a mute with the right hand fingers. And in the, in the tap there we have a right hand finger but I decided later on after I made a tap to use a tap with my right hand just to indicate some uh, rhythmic effect. And that tap you will see in the second line of the tap. Uh, in the first beat, the fourth measure. So, and also variation in the attack. And here also we have that slide is on the third beat, the second half of the third beat, and the fourth beat starts with a rest where we let that. Uh, ring into the beat. No mutes there. And here again we have that upstroke with my two fingers and a downstroke with the nails of the first and second uh, finger. And of course the left hand up. And here you'll have to use the left hand up because you don't have time to use your uh, right hand because it's a triplet. It's down and the open strings, third and fourth open strings. And now we're going to the, the three bars shuffling. Okay, and after that, in the sixth bar, um, it's important that you play those open strings because they are part of the next move. I form the E chord in the beginning of the seventh bar, and I do that with a little delay on the on the index finger, especially later. Not maybe this time. And we have that pitch and a mute with the palm. So the open strings, they, um, they are hammered afterwards by placing the E chord. That's why it's important that you use that E chord. Also because in the, the shuffle part, I'm not playing one string, but maybe with a time three strings at the same time. And that therefore you also have to mute it, otherwise it sounds pretty awful. So we have that B7 chord and I'm, I'm going to do it without the pinch, so just placing the chord so you can hear what the importance of playing those open strings and then forming the chord. Uh, once more. And I do the hammer on on the third string at the same time when I pinch. That's the moment when you do the hammer on with the first finger on the third string. Now the first beat, try to uh, keep that chord there and the second beat we're going to the sixth string three and fourth fret and here we need to mute the fifth string because if you let it sound it sounds very awful like this. It doesn't belong there so we mute it but we hit the strings hard enough that the fourth open strings rings. So it's... And you have that percussive sound also, which makes your sound of the, of the shuffle much heavier and uh, more interesting. Listen to all the, the, the fourth, the sixth string. And now with. But muting is absolutely necessary here, otherwise, again, it sounds awful. Then just the second uh, fret of the fifth string for the third beat. And you can play as forceful again and let that fourth open string ring. But don't forget to mute it. And then we have an, an A chord. You can also bar it like this. 
and we we're hitting it with our uh, index and middle finger, not too hard. And again, it's a triplet with the index, uh, the third string, open string, and the tam plays the fourth open string. Now you hear really the hammer on on the third string. And now with the pinch and the mute. And the last time we're going to the fourth fret, second, uh, fifth string. And now we have a, a E7. And we're muting that with the right hand uh, fingers. You could also lift the left hand, but I think there's more variation if you do it with the right hand fingers. And you can uh, accent the first part of every triplet. And here we lift and kill the sound in the same time as the fingers of the right hand. Be careful to do that slide down from the 7th fret, not too fast. Do it really slowly. Okay, then we have two bars of A7 which of course you can grab like this also. Mute of the bass string. And then we have a rake. Uh, your index finger starts with the first string and goes up to the fourth string and is immediately followed by the thumb striking down on the fifth, fourth and third string and muting. I'm gonna play those first two beats of that 11th measure in succession. This um, technique is used a lot when, you, uh, when you're accompanying for singing. For example, listen to uh, Scrapper Blackwell. He does that a lot, even in other keys like the key of uh, D, for example. Like this. So it's an important thing uh, to know and uh, very handy. And that third beat, it's not a rake, but an upstroke and really muted with the palm again. And here we're going to the fifth fret and only when we use the pinky to also fret the fifth fret first string. I'm muting with the right hand fingers. And here we have a double bass. I sometimes uh, even precede it. And I'm attacking that and there's a little um, well technique uh, to put some variation in your sound with the side of my tap. Someone asked me also, how about your nails? How do you care for your nails? I am lucky to have strong nails and I trim them. I follow the contours of my fingers and they are just sticking out uh, of the flesh. So I play with a mix of flesh and nail. So it's about 50-50, I'd guess. And the thumb, I file the side here um, so it cannot get stuck behind the string. So this here is filed like this a bit. And I'm lucky I can bend my tempera very much like this. Some people say I have double jointed temps, but um, therefore you can change the angle of attack. So here I did with a side. It's a very different sound than only like this flesh. And also, I use a movement 
Um, I'm also strongly against anchoring your right hand to the fretboard. That's good for maybe a John Hurt tune. But if you want to play blues um, in a more loose style, you will have to be able to move your hands. So I'm not saying I'm not against anchoring and you can I anchor at some times of uh, the, a song, but also I move around. So uh, for example, to do those, to, if you want to do those uh, up and down strokes, you cannot do that if your hand is anchored. So that's a technique to uh, watch, I think. So. Notice how I'm really playing three strings, three bass strings and muting. And in the last beat of the 13th measure, I'm using the temp. to play that lick and I'm, I'm playing it with, with only with the temp so the whole 14th measure except the last beat is played with the temp you could easily play that with your fingers but the temp on the treble strings give, uh, gives a special sound and even if you play it a bit closer to the bridge gives an uh, a more a, a sound with, with some more variation with more color and listen this is not a triplet but and here we have a hammer on and pull off and we have again our B7 chord with followed by the open strings third and fourth again a triplet Okay, so after that, we have that uh, partial A7 chord once more, which we see in the third bar also. Right hand uh, muting a lot there. And also notice the dynamics I'm trying to uh, uh, get by playing softer and harder. So the open strings are played softer than the bends. Again, I'm attacking that bass string from the side and muting it immediately after that with my uh, palm. And here we have a nice, interesting, uh, light, typical lightning Hopkins lick. And he uses a D7 position chord moved up, so it becomes an E. And so the first is a triplet. Then we're going down once more. And then we have a grace note to the third string, third fret. is slid very fast to the fourth fret, followed by the open string and a mute. And it's that, that mute that makes it interesting. So in slow motion it sounds like this. Okay. Notice the uh, dynamics again. I'm exaggerating a bit, but again that side attack to get an interesting sound. And the second one uh, second bass of that beat is again which uh, with the palm muted. Now we have the end tag. And here's a good example of what is also important um, is listening. Listening is half the battle. Uh, I advise you first of all to listen to the music you want to play, uh, listen as much as possible, and secondly listen to what you 
are playing yourself. Try to record it. Now you have plenty of uh, things to record with, and it doesn't have to be a hi-fi recording, but listen to it and you will surprise yourself uh, how you sound. Sometimes crappy, sometimes good. But it will give you a very better understanding of what you are playing because there's a very big difference in listening while you're playing than listening to what you are playing. Uh, I'm always amazed if someone else plays my guitars, how good they sound <laughs> because it's a different uh, experience, the sound coming to you or the sound coming, going away from you. So that last phrase is... Um, well, let, let me do it like this is what a beginner would play and he would watch the tap and play it uh, as it is tapped out. <laughs> That would be playing without really listening to what I played. Listen to the dynamics. So first of all, the first triplet I played, I, when, when I did slide to the seventh fret, that was really hard. That's slower. And then we have nine times on the ninth fret six times and you can do a little um, how do you call it uh, crescendo from starting uh, uh, quiet and going up in sound and then accenting and then finally so that first hammer on is with the side of the nail of the tap so you have a little sharpest sound, and then only with flesh, softly. If you listen to the last time, it's almost that I don't play certain notes, and I play them very softly. So um, let me play it one more time. This lesson is also a sort of an introductory lesson or preparation for a series of lessons I will do um, about a song which is really played in this style, uh, very much less is more, where, you, where I play notes and you don't hear them almost. And it's a song called The Sky is Crying. I also, I also already recorded it on uh, electric guitar. And, but I will do a new version on acoustic guitar and then a lesson with tap and everything and free uh, on, the, on the song. So stay tuned and keep on picking. <laughs> 